Oh, welcome everyone to the next installment of Power BI Newcastle. Um, we we don't focus solely on Power BI. Obviously, we're doing this user group, but we do have a, another user group which is focused more on the data platform as a whole. Uh, so keep your eye out for Newcastle Data Platform and Cloud Meetup. Uh, we do have the next one scheduled in for it's actually the 19th uh, week tomorrow with uh, Jess Pomfret, who's going to be running through some some DBA tools wizardry. So meet yourself, uh, get yourself there. Here are your organizers uh, on the call tonight. It's myself, Glenn and Mark has joined. And for those that weren't on the call before, big congratulations to Mark on his, uh, his promotion at work. Although he said he isn't getting a pay rise, I think he needs to have a, a word with the bosses about that. That's just my opinion though. Um, sorry, but yes, we are on, on Twitter as well. If you want to follow us or if you've got any questions afterwards, uh, anything you felt you weren't comfortable asking during the user group tonight, feel free to, to get in touch with, with any of us and we'll, if it's a question for Ben specifically, we'll get that to him if you don't go direct. Although these sessions are currently virtual, uh, we, we do still include our sponsors, which are Nigel Frank. They've been a, a big, big help to us over the last few years, not just with the Power BI, but also the DPAC user group in terms of the, the venue. Um, finding locations to, to run the in-person events is very difficult and obviously can be quite costly. And these guys have in the past given us their offices and even paid for the pizzas and beers, which is fantastic. So we still want to do a big shout out to those guys because we will be hopefully going back to in person. Uh, we're still trying to work on dates as to when that would be. But it is still something we, we wish to endeavour. Uh, so tonight's agenda, obviously, we've been running through having a bit chat earlier on. We are a couple of minutes over in terms of getting uh, Ben started on his session, the introduction to Deneb. Bit of a Q&A and then depending on how many questions there is, uh, we'll be able to finish somewhere around about quarter past 20 past, I was going to say nine there, seven. Uh, so we'll not be here till that time. Looking forward to the, the next couple of months. Uh, we've got uh, Pascal come along in June and Reid uh, Havens is going to be joining us in July. So they should already be up on Meetup. Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong. If they're not, we will get them up very soon. So keep your eyes out for those and get yourself registered. Something I have literally just thrown in about 30 seconds before we started, uh, which is why it looks a bit of a shambles, the slide. But for those of you that aren't aware, I've never heard of Data Relay. It is a, an event which is run in, well, there's going to be four different cities in four consecutive days across the UK, um, covering all sorts of topics. Again, not just Power BI, but anything and everything data related. So if you do live in or nearby any of these locations, try and get yourself there. It will be free. And we used to have one in, in Newcastle or have had it in Newcastle a few times. It's always a fantastic event. So try and get yourselves to it. And there's the link, datarelay.co.uk. And finally, again, obviously we had the, uh, the Twitter handles for myself, Glenn and Mark before, but obviously we have them there for Power BI Newcastle and the DPAC. Uh, we do have a Slack channel as well, if you want to join that and we can continue conversations in there. And Ben, that is going to be all from me. So if you're happy to share your screen and rock and roll, we can go. Fantastic. So you can see my screen okay or? Certainly can. Excellent. Good to know. Uh, so first of all, hello. And um, my name is Ben Ferry. And we're going to look at a bit about Deneb today. Um, I've called this the basics to the slightly less basics, um, simply because we're not going to go massively deep into some of the stuff that Deneb can do, because you can do a lot with it. But this is more intended as to what it is, how to get started with it, and then how to build 
on your initial work. So basically how you can learn from yourself and how you can learn from some of the excellent documentation that is available to you. So very quickly about me, because we're not here to learn about me. I am a senior data analyst and of course, Power BI enthusiast. Um, I've worked with Power BI since the very start of 2017. Um, my favorite things in it, if I was forced to um, answer that would be Power Query, which is a fantastic uh, tool. And also I very much enjoy the visualization side, which is of course why I'm talking about Denim today. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, if you're interested in that. I do lots of stuff about ideas, obviously Deneb, and I also do live chats with people from the Power BI community every Thursday. Um, so if you want to check that out there, that's youtube.com forward slash Power BI guy. It's a bit of a shameless self-promotion there. Um, but moving on from me, I uh, want to talk, uh, talk about Deneb, of course. So I started using Deneb late last year, so I'd say around about November, and I quickly became really kind of into it. And a lot of good stuff that you can do that. Basically, there's three main points I've got about Deneb. There's obviously a lot more about Deneb, but what we're doing with Deneb is we're creating bespoke visualizations. So basically, generally, what you're limited by is, of course, the structure of the language, which is called Vega or Vega Lite. We'll get into that. Uh, your own imagination and your own, you know, limitations of what you can do, which is why we have to learn as much as we can. Um, it is open source, which means free. So everything you create with Deneb, you can put in your reports. You can share those reports with whatever licenses you have, just like you would with any other Power BI visualization. So there are some visualizations where you have to pay a license fee per person. That doesn't exist with Deneb. It's all completely open source, all com free, completely free. Other than the time that you invest yourself, because obviously there is a learning curve here. Um, but the final point that I've got on this slide is that it's it's very much worth the effort. Um, you'll see quite quickly that you can create things that you thought perhaps at first look very, very complex. Um, but of course, we're going to go through all of these things today as we look at how to create basic visualizations in Deneb and then build on those things. So I'm gonna close this up because that's all the slides that I have because we're gonna go to the good stuff, which is of course Power BI. Um, before we go into Power BI, I want to um, just show you a couple of things that I mentioned on the slides there. I'm just gonna close this up. Don't want any recovered files. Um, so, documentation-wise, and this is one of the massive strengths of Deneb. I know no one likes talking about documentation, but it's, um, of course, very helpful when we're learning something new. So, the first slide I'm the first um, website I'm showing you, sorry, this is just the Deneb homepage. And it basically tells you what Deneb is. It's a certified visual, and it uses the JSON syntax to create visualizations. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to go through it all because the links are here. Maybe someone can post them in the um, in the chat if possible. Um, but if not, I can provide them to someone else. So basically, this is the website for Dendup. To be honest, I don't read this particularly much. What I focus on is the actual documentation for the language, which is Vega and Vega Lite. And this is what I'm going to look at now. This next website. So. Vega and Vega Lite. Essentially, they are two connected languages which are going to let you create your visualizations. I only use Vega Lite. Thus far, I haven't had the need to use Vega, which is, as the name suggests, slightly more complex, or indeed sometimes a lot more complex than Vega Lite. Um, but this is a really very, very strong website. Um, there's some great examples. So again, this is just what it is. So I'm not going to go through this too much. If you click on examples, this is when it starts to get a bit more interesting because you can really just scroll down and see all the things you can create. Obviously, you've got to ask yourself, if I can create a bar chart in Power BI, why would I want to do that with Vega Lite, which is a very, very valid point. So most of the time, you wouldn't be creating a, a, a bar chart with Deneb and Vega Lite you'd be creating something a bit more complex. 
though in this session we're going to look at a bar chart but i'll get to why in a minute so as i say you can just scroll down you can see a lot of the stuff that you can create it gets increasingly complex i mean um if you want if you so wish you could even create a pie chart i don't know probably not um but exactly so just scroll through this and you can see the examples obviously if you then click on one of the examples it's going to give you more information and this is what I kind of want to start on is this concept here, because not only do you have the code to create something, you also have this online editor, which is allows you to actually edit the code and see how that works within the website itself. I'll come back to that. So what I want to do now is basically put what I've just shown you from this documentation and create a visualization. So everything you can see on the page now, just so you know, this is all um, this is all Deneb, other than the slicers and the buttons. This is this is all Deneb stuff. And as you can, if you've anyone spied the name of this PBIX, this is experimental. So you'll see a lot of messy, a lot of things are kind of weird, might not work very well. Um, but yes, this is the 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 my Deneb PBIX. So, so I'm hearing strange now. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to a different page on this report, and I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to create a new visualization so I can show you how it looks when you first get started with Deneb, because that's what we're doing. We're getting started with Deneb. So this is. The visualization and you can get that just like you can with any custom vid you just get it from by clicking this and the get more visuals button going to get a decent size and then i'm just going to put in a few measures as you would so i'm going to go for this is all um fantasy football data by the way if anyone's interested in what the hell this is all about it's fantasy for football data not that's relevant um but this is the data that I'm using because this is my also my test data because I play fantasy football. So I'm going to put in two measures and I'm going to put in basically round data. So I have my values here and I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go to edit. I want to do that. This is when we start working with Deneb. So we have some options here. We can choose between Vega Light and Vega, but as I say, all of, everything I'm going to do today, it's all going to be Vega Light. Yeah, um, I have barely worked with Vega, all Vega Light. You can, if you want to, you can elect to actually just create something this way by clicking on something, say a simple bar chart, and you can select actually the category and the measure. So if you do it that way, it's going to very quickly create a very standard visualization for you. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do the slightly more complex way because I want to show you basically from completely blank. So I'm going to click on empty and then I'm going to click on create. In here, straight away, you see we have this kind of empty template. I um, can maybe yeah, zoom in a little bit. If that's okay, yeah. Someone said once that it was too uh, needed to zoom in. So let me know if anyone has any problems seeing this when I've zoomed in. I've never used this zoom tool before. This is the first time. So hopefully this is okay for you. Um, so data is our data set and mark is null. So what does that mean? What is it trying to tell us? What do we have to do? Well, if we go back to the documentation that we had before, we could see here that it says data then it has all this nonsense and it has mark is bar. And we know it's a bar chart. It says it right there and it says mark bar. So from that, we can take that the mark is how we choose which type of visualization we want to create. So on top of that, we have all this information here as well, encoding X, Y, that kind of stuff. So knowing that what we do about data visualization we pretty much all know what an X and a Y is. It's, a, it's the axis, right? So we can kind of guess that all of this is stuff that we can utilize, which is pretty cool. So I can just copy this. I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to copy it. 
And then I can take that and I can put it in my existing visualization. So I'll just do a bit of that as well. So now you can see we had mark was null. Now we have, as I said, mark is bar. So we have these buttons here also, apply. So we also have auto apply changes as you type. So everything you type, it does it automatically. That kind of annoys me, so I switch it off. It, it can be really helpful. At first, I loved it. <laughs> like the first then a video I created, I said, yes, this is fantastic. This is the way to do it. I changed my mind dramatically. Um, and this will repair and format the JSON. So if I click on that now, it'll change this and it's a much more readable format now. Yeah? It's also actually applied those changes to what we have here. And we can see straight away that it showed us nothing, which is fair, because it's what it's saying here is X field is A, and here Y field is B. Well, we can just take that and replace them with our field, right? So if you want to say what the x-axis is, so my x-axis, I want that to be round. Yeah. So I have my um, round here. So I can just start to type round. And as you can see straight away, I have a bit of um, intelligence and it works really well. So I can just then hit round. And then I can either click this, apply, and see what happens. So now we see so it's round, but of course nothing because we still need to apply here on the y-axis what our value is going to be. And I want that to be total point by game week. So let's type that in, apply those changes, and then all of a sudden we have the date in front of us. We have created our very first visualization using Deneb and Vega Light. So yay, congratulations. Uh, it's obviously very basic, um, but I do think a huge plus of working with this tool, Deneb, is that you can take a lot of information that exists in this documentation and simply copy it and paste it. Um, obviously, you need to read the documentation to understand the bits and pieces. Um, but again, if we just go to here, this online editor, having this, I mean, for me, I have no problem doing this inside the, my PBX, but if you don't want to, or if you just want to mess around a little bit here, or want to learn more, if you hover over this information, it gives you a lot. Yeah, it, it's it's really quite helpful to use this um, this editor they have here, this online editor. So I can really say that, um, I mean, I have no coding background other than writing some dodgy HTML in the 90s. Um, so for me, having this as a resource was great, and I think it would be really helpful um, to, to pick up on this sort of thing. But if we just go back now to here, and we've said, uh, again, mark bar. So mark bar. What if I want to create a different visualization? How do I know what to change in this mark bar? So if I go here to my documentation, and here I click on mark it we have all these different options we can choose from right so i mean if i click on line i mean we, again we know what a line chart looks like so i can then say okay so maybe if i just change this part here and i just go uh, line uh, instead of my bar cool now i have a line chart so creating different types of visualizations is is extraordinarily straightforward because all you have to do is just change that one word. So if we wanted to start looking at things that perhaps you don't have in, in Power BI, which I think is of course one of the strongest reasons to use Deneb, um, is if we look at something like a, like a trail. Now trail is a really cool example because you can adjust the size of the trail using an actual value. So if you look at here, for example, I'm going to go to the, open up the editor again. Here we have mark trail. So if I just take that, and again, I go mark trail. At first, it actually doesn't look different at all, because actually 
it's just a line that's slightly thinner if you notice that because the reason for that is I actually need to determine what size, what's determining my, um, my, my mark. So here you see something called encoding and the encoding is basically telling us how to set that up. So here I have my mark trail and my encoding is saying this is the x-axis and this is the, the, the type of data. So field is the round, we've already done that. And the type is nominal. The label angle, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but if we then just look, okay, so what they've done here is also within the encoding, perhaps if I just take this size, yeah, and put it in here. If I go, so size, oops, I made a mistake for sure. Excuse me, sorry about this. Doing something very silly. Y size. Ah, oh, I made a mistake. No. Okay, so if I go, for example, my size should be based on a field, and the field is I want to click a call bonus, for example. Now you can see that I have a visualization, which is a, a line chart, essentially, but the line, I can determine the size or the thickness of that line using a different measure, which is why I have the bonus in there as well. I could have also set a uh, total point by game week and then has the same effect, but it really just depends on the measure that you use. So that was something as simple as changing the mark from trail and then within the encoding, as you can see here, my encoding going from here down to here. And I just stick this line in here, so size, and I'm said, okay, so my size, I want that to be determined by a field. The field that I want to use is this total points by game week, and then the type. So you've got your type, you've got, you know, as you can see here, nominal, you've got quantitative, so it's a numerical value, so we're using quantitative. The error that I made the first time was I accidentally stuck the size inside the x-axis, which is, of course, completely wrong. So I need to make sure that I've closed off my x-axis and I've closed off my y-axis, and then I stick in the size, and I have size of my, my trail here. That's cool. That's good fun. What the reason I use that, well, there's two reasons. The first reason is because, as I say, that's something that's not so easy to achieve in Power BI. Um, but here, as I say, a bit of copy and paste, a bit of understanding of where things are meant to go, where things are supposed to go, and you'll see that pretty quickly you have something useful. I know this, I know currently it's far from a perfect visualization. There's lots of stuff that, that shouldn't be there or the stuff that should be there that isn't there, but we're kind of building up. There's, as I say, this is the point of what I'm doing here is starting from the very basics, in this case, nothing, and then slowly adding elements. So you can see that whilst yes, there is a steep learning curve and I understand that it can be quite daunting or maybe you can just say, okay, but is it worth it? Hopefully, what I'm going to show you is that, yes, it is in indeed worth it. So that's my mark trail. If I then, for example, went mark bar, and that, that is something which I find quite nice because now you have bars which are determined by, by this. So at first, we did create a very standard bar chart. Yeah, we just said, okay, bar chart, and then we have the thick thickness of these bars. Um, now we have a bar chart where the size, just like it was with the trail, is determined by a different measure. Now, I'm not going to suggest this is a beautiful visualization, certainly not, but it kind of helps you to start to understand what you can do. And when, for me, when I'm learning something new, what I really enjoy is to experiment. Yeah, I mean, this, as I said before, everything that I do in this particular file is, is complete experimentation. I play around with things and I just see where it takes me based on adding different elements and that sort of thing, you know? And this is what we're gonna keep on doing. We're just gonna keep on adding elements and to see where it goes. So I'll probably take away the size now because we've seen how it works, but it doesn't look particularly good. 
it can come in useful to certain visualization types. But for this one, let's just leave it and just, just take this away and go back to our quite basic bar chart. And just saying that the reason I can, I have a shortcut in my mouse, so I'm not applying the changes here all the time. So in case you're wondering how I'm applying these changes, I'm just selecting a shortcut in my mouse. But usually you could just click on this button. So I want to quickly go back to this um, label angle that you see right here. Um, that is actually not strictly necessary in this visualization. So you'll see if I just remove this and obviously get the, um, the comma as well. If you have an error, you'll notice at the bottom here. So the red arrow and um, the red arrow, the, what is it? white cross on the red square is an error which not means nothing will work like that because of my comma if you get a yellow one it's just indicating that it might still work but there are some things that you need to look at anyway so you see i removed this label angle and now all of my um x-axes are at this angle because that is what they are by default. So you have to kind of specify. And that's exactly what this label angle was for, right? That's why it was there. Excuse me. And the reason I say it shouldn't be there is because there's a better place to put it. So in Deneb, you also have, well, we're just looking at specifications so far, and we have config. Now in config, it can be a little bit overwhelming because of this. <laughs> what is hidden there so in the config none of this is actually strictly necessary um it's setting up a default look it's saying certain things should be on certain things uh, should be off generally it's very helpful and there are some things that i do always change when i'm making certain visualization types um, especially when I'm working with dates, I won't really cover that, but it's just basically, it's something to look at and start to understand. So basically it's setting up, um, sizes, widths of lines, fonts, font sizes, this sort of thing, which you can completely change yourself. And uh, what I want to change is I want to get rid of my label angle here because it's nice to keep this part as clean as possible. So you can understand purely what's going on from the data perspective. And if I go to config, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to go here. It says um, axis X. And I'm just going to add that here. And hopefully it's correct. Exactly it is. So axis label is zero. And then I apply those changes. And you can see now oh, it hasn't worked. Oops, I know it hasn't worked because I did this, which is wrong. and just bad. Let's see if that's better. Sorry about this. I'll just do it myself. Got to copy and paste and being lazy. I'll just do it myself. Go. One of the reasons I copy and paste so much is because I'm terrible at typing. Act word to see. Shouldn't have copied and pasted. So now I've added my label angle, as I mentioned. And I have everything here as it was before. And on top of that, I have a cleaner specification. I can go back here and sort that out. So as I say, um, I'm not going to go through every line of this because this is a lot of information, but be aware that it's there and what it sets up. The documentation will help you with it. Um, you can also play around with it if you go and use um, this here. This sort of thing, because you have also here config and you can choose custom configs and you can actually copy and paste these configs into this config and then it changes what you have. See, it's got, you know, the alliance are back on and that sort of thing. So something to be aware of, you can play with the con. I don't want to cover config too much because there's just a lot you can do with it. How things look and fine tuning is a lot of what it is, but it's there and helpful. Whilst I'm here going through config, I'll go one step further and I'll go through settings. Um, we've already looked at this already. We're using Vega Lite. You have the option to use Canvas and SVG. Um, as it says here, it basically says if you have if your visual has 
basically a lot of data, a lot of a lot of a lot of um, data points. You might want to switch to Canvas because it loads a lot faster. Um, if I switch to Canvas now, you can see perhaps the difference a little bit. Basically, how it looks is that the edges aren't as smooth. And uh, obviously, SGV, we know how it works, is looks nicer. But if you have a lot of data, a lot of data points, you might want to consider the switch to Canvas. Um, expose. So basically, cross filtering is switched off by default. If you want to use, it does support cross filtering absolutely. If you want to use that, you can just look at uh, and click on this cross filtering um, of, of data points. Um, so look at all the options and go through them and understand what they do. It's all very helpful. It's all quite self-explanatory. Um, I can also say that if you're unsure, the documentation on the DNF side is, 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 also, is also pretty strong, but it's pretty self-explanatory. If you want to use cross-filtering, you can just click here. We can have a look at that later, perhaps. Anyway, sorry, digress. We get back to our specification and we have our bar chart. So what you can also do is obviously create more complex visualizations. As I said, this is very basic. Um, it's also quite uh, potentially useless if you want to do things such as show data labels. Now, if you want to show data labels, you need to create a different mark. So we have here mark and it says bar. Once you start to use layers, what you can do is, is you can basically create a visualization that has multiple layers. So a bar and a line. Excuse me, a bar and a line, a bar and a line in text. So bars on top of bars, all this sort of thing. So really everything that you see is, is a layer. And that's gonna, gonna what we're gonna start doing now, essentially. Um, a layer is very, very helpful. And it's something that exists pretty much on every single Dena visualization that you'll, that you'll see, unless it's something like this. Anyway, how does that work? To do that, all you need to do is this, to really create the basis of your layers, is this. So I've gone here and I've just said layer. So basically I've indicated that what I want to do is I want to start creating layers. Makes sense. And I can then say, okay, so this is where my all of my layers are going to fall within these square brackets. And I will then use a curly bracket, which is a really fun thing to say. And then I will just, to, to demonstrate really how it's done, I can then just close off this and then see that even though I have a layer, I'm only showing one layer. So if I say layer mark bar, and then I just kind of go uh, like this. You can see that I've applied those changes, but nothing at all has changed, right? Because though I have created layers or I've created the option of adding layers, the only thing that I have is still my bar. What I can now do though, is say, okay, let's start creating some, some new layers, yeah? Space that and make it easier to quite what I'm talking about and how this looks. So here I have, as I say, my mark bar, and that's my first layer. To indicate now that I wanna create a second layer, all I need to do is I do my comma, and then I'm going to do this. And this basically is where my second layer starts. So I've got layer, square bracket, open it, uh, curly bracket, close the curly brackets. Everything within these two brackets is one layer. Now my second layer is gonna be everything between this bracket and the bracket I use when I close it off, which is gonna be basically here. So as you can see, now I have this yellow warning and that's because essentially I have a layer that's completely empty, All right? So I want to create a mark that is text because the text is going to be my values. So if I go here, and do something very similar. Here it says mark bar. But what I'm gonna do here is I've got mark 
and type is text. Now, the reason I've added type and not just mark type, because if you want to add extra information to that, you need to say mark and then type in the text, and then you can specify more as you go. I will make a change to this one later so you can see what I mean. But basically, if you want more than just basically mark and type, I'm uh, sorry, mark and, and type of mark, you need to actually specify mark type and then add more information. And the reason I've done that is because I want to add this thing here, which is going to help me define where my text is going to lie. It's a dy minus 15. Now you'll see precisely what that means when we finish, finish off this particular uh, mark, this uh, particular layer. Uh, and then I'll change that value so you can see precisely what's happening. So that is my mark type. I can just close that off. The layer is still open, of course, here and here. This is just closing off the mark and my type. And now I'm going to add a little bit of um, encoding. And my encoding is going to be what field I want to use, right? So I'll close this off here. And I want to say the encoding is going to be the text and what text I'm going to use. So I'm just going to put this in here. Just like we have here, when we're saying encoding, so basically specifying what we're using, my encoding here is text. So we're specifying that the text is a text value and what that text is going to be. So it's going to be the field, and we're using the same field here because we're creating date labels, right? So obviously we have to use the same value, yeah? So the the data that it's going to show is going to be the data that you can see in the field total points by game week, which is the same that we have here on the y axis. I'll then close that off, which closes off my encoding. And that is also closed off the marks. And now you can see that. So it's quite, um, let's zoom in so you can see what happened here. So now you can see we have here all of my values. So I'm not going to read them out because that would be strange, but you can see basically that when I added mark text and all this information here, I got exactly what I wanted, which was the values that corresponded with each point, so each week of my total points per game week. So I know at this point, it might seem like that's a lot of work just to add data labels. And that is what I thought. And that is probably essentially in some regard true. However, once you do it, it's not, it's not, I'm, just, it's not, I'm not going to sit here and say, once you've done it, it's really easy. You can just type it. That's obviously not true. Yeah. We, we know how these things, these things go. You have templates that you start to create for yourself and you can actually create templates from Denev itself. And then you have a basis of what you can do and what you can add to that. Um, so I know when you first see this sort of thing, I mean, I was a, probably a little bit put off but I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed the experience of creating it. So I kind of kept going with it and it's really, really worth it to kind of keep going, keep adding things. You will definitely create things that you absolutely, absolutely could not create within Power BI without Denev. I can, I can promise you that it's really good fun as well. And there are also um, paid visualizations out there. I will not name them because I'm not sure if that's a cool thing to do where I've seen people basically recreate what you can do in those paid visualizations through Deneb. Um, obviously, as I said, time and effort, but the payoff for me is definitely worth it. So just going back to this DY here, I mentioned I'll go back to it, so I will. That is basically me saying, where do I want this to sit? Where do I want the value to sit, yeah? So if you see here, DY minus 15, if I just take out the minus, and at that, you can see now that I have my values. Obviously, now they look terrible. You can't see them because of the colors. We can sort this out. Um, it's within the bar itself. 
if I go back again, minus, but this time I just see minus five, you can see it sits there. So for me, that's a big win straight away. I can choose precisely where I want, precisely where I want my text to be. Um, you can also do certain things, which I won't do today, such things such as if the value is lower than zero, then make it dy minus five. If it's greater than zero, make it whatever, dy 15, so not minus, but plus. So that's very helpful, obviously, if you want to make sure that it's always within the bar. You know, if it's a negative number and you say like that, it's going to be like below. So you can do a lot more with it than I'm going to show you. Again, this is just about experimenting, learning, and then starting to add these conditional clauses, which are very, very possible within Vagalite. So obviously, if I can do it with the, the, the y-axis, just going back to what I had originally, I'll just do something which might, might make no sense at this point, but does depending on the visualization that you're creating. You can do the same with the, the x-axis. So you have your dy and your dx, and um, that is me saying I want it to be precisely in this location. A good case for that is that if you have two bars next to each other, you can push them across. So, so it's easier to understand which value belongs to which bar. I think it's quite a common problem when you're using multiple um, marks, I'll call them, on your visualizations, that sometimes they kind of clash a little bit. But with this, it's much easier to kind of ensure that that doesn't happen. So this is your dy and your dx. I hope that makes sense. So go back to what we originally had was that. So now we have our bar and we have our value. Pretty much still what can be created in Power BI. We're gonna just go one step further and add a different type of, of um, mark on that. Because once we have ourselves set up with our marks, all we have to do is just do that, and then we can start creating a, a different mark. Um, and it's, as I say, once you kind of start to understand the patterns of how it works and which words mean what, then um, it starts to get, like I said, I'm probably gonna make a terrible mistake now and um, regret saying this, but it just gets easier once you have a couple of marks on there, because you can say, okay, I've created my first mark, nice and straightforward, I've created my second mark, and then you can even start to kind of, maybe if you want copy and paste yourself and just like change one or two things, you know? Um, but what I want to add now is a different type of mark and I want to use my, um, my, my bonus. Thus far, I have used total points per game week and I've used round, you know, uh, exactly. So I will use bonus now and I will create a, a, a rule. Um, mark, what it's called. And how that works is as follows. So again, as always, we're going to start off a new mark. So I say a new layer, I apologize. So we've closed this one off and I'm going to create a new one by clicking, by doing my curly bracket. And I'm going to go mark and I'm going to go rule. So that is the start, as you've seen before, that's the start of my mark of this layer. So mark, type, and then rule. So in this case, I mean, people get bored of repetition, but I would say in this case, repetition is good because it kind of shows you what, how things are, are working. Um, I will add a couple of elements now because if we um, look at how uh, a, a rule, so a rule actually just showing the documentation. Maybe it's a better thing to do in case you think I'm just saying random words. A, here. a rule is essentially like a straight line, yeah? So it's, it can look like this. It's, um, this is how it looks when you have it on the, um, on a standard visual. So it's a strange one to use. Obviously it looks pretty cool in this context, completely dependent on the visualization type that you're gonna use. Again, this is about experimentation um, and what you think works, a good different ways, new ways um, to uh, visualize your data based on what you wanna do, not what uh, Power BI has said that you have to do, right? Um, so 
maybe what I'm going to create you think is a terrible visualization and you would never do it yourself. That's, that's fair enough. This is, I'm just giving you examples. Um, I quite like it, but I'm often wrong, so I'm fine with that. So we have type rule and I'm going to um, add, actually no, for not, I'm just going to for now just do that, type rule. And I need to add my uh, encoding. So in this case, I'm going to add my um, my y axis. Yeah. So basically the value, because I didn't have to do it here. Um, so for this for this um, mark, I didn't specify y axis because it's actually specified here within the visualization itself. So every time you don't specify something, it will by default, use what you've already specified in the general encoding for your visualization. There are different ways of doing this. Um, I'm not suggesting that the one I'm showing you is the best way, but it's a good way. It works well. Um, and you can, you can play around with that yourself. But for example, if you want to do a visualization which has multiple marks, obviously you need to specify which part you want to use. Just so it's kind of clear what I'm what I'm saying is, for example, um, here obviously I said total points by game week. If I went to the end, use like bonus, it would ah, that was a stupid thing to do. Sorry about that. Terrible time to give you an example. You know what? It's okay. Let's just get back to what I was doing. I just made a terrible mistake. Well, not a terrible mistake, but I was going to show you something, but there's no point in showing you now because I just uh, created this huge error. But we move on. All good. So we have mark and we have type. And the type we are using, as I said, is rule. And I'm going to add my encoding. And my encoding is going to be simply what values I want to use. So here I've written, I'm just gonna get rid of this so you can see the difference. I added a lot there, so I'm gonna go, gonna go through it step by step. I said, give me mark type rule. This is clear, we, we understand what that does now because we've seen here mark type text. So it's me specifying what type of mark I want to use. Yeah, mark type rule. And I've also said encoding I want to use this value, field bonus, yeah? Which is why I have here, very, very thin line, really thin black line, still looks a bit weird, I understand that. Very thin line, and that basically represents a value which is my bonus points. So I can do more things, I can start to style that a bit more, if you will, so it doesn't look quite so weird and generally terrible. So if I go back here to my mark type rule and just add things. So as you saw before, when I changed it, um, when I changed this X axis, when I said axis X and what I started out with was just label padding five, I just added my comma and I added more values and it just, it just worked. We have a very similar thing here. So I have mark type rule, but I haven't specified anything. Like I did here, mark type text, I then specified my dy minus 15. So what I'm going to do now is specify something a little bit different. I'm just going to specify maybe the size and the color of these things, right? So if I say stroke width, and I just add that in, I'll have a slightly thicker black line. And worth pointing out, by the way, if you do it this, it doesn't work. See the difference? Love a little bit of that. It has to be, it is basically case sensitive. So don't get tricked by that. So stroke width three, what else can I do? I can do things like change the, the color. So it's gonna go stroke and I'm going to say um, huh, orange, I like orange. See if that works. Yeah, okay, so now I have a, a slightly wider stroke width and I have the color orange. Just so you know, you write orange. If you want, you can also um, use like a hex code. So if, for example, I just click whatever on my page and I say I want to use 
and this hex code. And just do that. You can see now I have this blue or a different shade of blue than I had before. So you can you can choose. You can just name a, a, a color. If you want to be more specific, of course, use a hex code. Up to you. So that's that. You can also, when you start to get more in depth with this sort of thing, you can also do things such as um, changing the color, like on a, on a gradient, using rules and using different types of, uh, of colors, which is a very cool thing to do. It looks quite nice. Um, so yeah, this is me adding a, a rule, which is orange. If I want to go even further with that and kind of make it look maybe a little bit, I don't know, a little bit nicer, I think it looks quite cool. Feel this, say, Ben, this looks terrible. This is a bad visualization. I won't be offended. I'm not here to make beautiful visualizations. I'm here to show a bit of Denip. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I am going to add a point. And I'm going to say my point, I want it to be filled. Um, yep, filled is true. And then I'm going to say fill it. And I'll say also with orange, so you get like a nice effect. Yeah, so you get this little nice dot on the end. So we have total points per game week. We have bonus points with a little dot on the end to kind of draw attention to that. I've got to say, I like this visualization type that I'm creating because it's nice to, so for example, my total points by game week, the bonus points are actually part of that already. And what I like to do here is to show of that amount, how much are the, the other bonus points? Now I know you can do that using other other ways. So you can do you can use a line, for example, you know, bar line chart. This is a pretty easy thing, thing to do with Power BI. I kind of like to show it this way, it's not because it's different, but also because of the fact that um, I think it looks a bit cleaner than your standard like line. And um, yeah, I don't know. I quite like it, but like I say, we don't have to like it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing I had here, this mark type text. And I want that to be the values for my bonus points. So what I said before, when I said, yeah, it's really quite good once you get going, because you can start to, you know, create templates. You can start to um, copy and paste from yourself, right? That's pretty much what I said, I think, yeah. Um, and that's what I'm going to do now. I finished off this mark, which is my rule, which had my stroke width, which had all these little, little um, bits and pieces. Um, and I want to add my data label to that because to give it more value, I think it's nice when the, the, uh, the users can see quite quickly what the values are. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to steal from myself. There. Let's see, probably created an error, which I have. But I forgot to um, open up the layer. So if I just enter that now, you'll see that all I've done is on top of my existing values, I have the values again. Um, I have them twice, right? So, and I can just show that by just doing that minus five. And now you can see I got the values there twice, right? That's not helpful to anyone. So I need to do a couple of things. I need to say field is my bonus points, right? So now at least we have different values. That's my bonus points, but they're way up there, right? And the reason that the way up there is because, as I mentioned before, and I think I didn't express it particularly clearly because then I went and made a mistake, um, is that I haven't specified which y axis I need to be using because here I'm saying that my y axis is total 
points per game week. But I can't do that. I need to bring these values all the way down here. Yeah. So to do that, when I do my encoding, which I've got here, encoding type text field is um, bonus. What should work is that if I just put a little comma here and then I add this line here, sure I have this line here is that I should, when I get it right, add my y axis. And on my y axis, it will start using the correct y axis. Now, this is a really basic thing, and I've made it a mistake. So I'm like thinking, okay, what have I done wrong? This is what happens when you copy and paste instead of doing it yourself. And my second. So here, what I added was my encoding, my text, with my field, and my bonus. Uh, that's what I've done, probably, hopefully. Yeah, I keep doing this. Sorry about that. Price is diverted. I again, same mistake that I did before. I just put it inside the text field and I shouldn't have done that. I needed to actually show it inside. I'll zoom in so you can see, highlight my own error. I originally put it within these brackets, which was wrong. Obviously it needs to go in on its own. So it's still within the encoding, but it's not within the text curly brackets. And now it works because now the values are all the way down here. Still looks bad, of course, because again, you can't see them. I'm gonna go back to the minus 15 so that the least not covering the dots. So now what we can do is we can simply change the color. So now we can see what we're actually looking at. Hopefully this time I get it right, but I make no promises, right? Ah, it worked, there you go. So now we have our total points per game week, and the values at the top. And here we have another value, which is our bonus points with a little dot on top to kind of draw attention to it and see that's where it is. And then for that also, we have the values for our total points per game week. Um, one thing that I failed to mention is that it does matter the order that you do this. So for example, if I had done the layer for my mark type, um, say rule. So if this was all this was above my bar, you wouldn't be able to see it. Simple reason, the bar is is larger, right? So maybe I don't want to do anything too stupid or make any too many errors here. Uh, my layers are here and here. So if I were to do this, maybe this will work. If not, let's undo it. It's all good. Yeah, okay, so now you can see it's all disappeared. And the reason for that is because my bar is kind of in the wrong place, if you will. Yeah, so if I put that to back to where it's supposed to be, where we started, we can then see that it's all set up correctly. So be aware that it does matter where you put your, um, your layers. I believe, I could be wrong. I believe there is a way of preventing that or making the layers irrelevant. Um, I don't know how to do that. I've never attempted to do that. Uh, one of the reasons for that, that is that so far, I quite like the fact that the layers are important because it kind of maps precisely where everything is. So if I know, if I look at it, I know roughly where I need to look. If I'm looking at something that's above, I know where to look in, um, in my code, in my specification. So this is what we have. Um, yeah, there is, uh, more you can do with these visualizations. I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I probably will not do uh, one extra thing which I was going to do. Um, and that is, uh, I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll show you instead of actually, instead of creating it. So as I said, that is basically the steps that you can take to create a, um, or a basic visualization for sure, um, but a visualization that can't really be created that easily in Power BI without Denib. I'm saying that easily because I'm not sure if it can be created at all. I wouldn't know how to do it, but without some kind of dirty workarounds, hacks, that sort of thing. Um, and this is actually a, a, one of the reasons I like Denib so much is because it's kind of ending the days of um, dirty hacks to create interesting or different visualizations. You can do it with code now. so. 
and um, it's a bit less uh, dodgy, if you will. So this is what I like to create just to kind of show this incremental building of a visual visualization. What I want to show is um, just go back to my report and um, on this page here. So as I said before, everything, and this is basically what it is, right? This, this is what I created. Um, Everything that you see here, as I say, other than the slice and the button, is Deneb. So this here is like your small multiples. Okay, so small multiples are quite a cool thing. You can create them in Power BI, of course, without Deneb, though I don't like them so much. It's harder to make them look anywhere near decent. And I want to show you some elements of this. And the reason for that is basically to show you that to create the small multiples, to do that is actually not a, um, a difficult step. Yes, trial and error um, or reading documentation, um, but it can be done quite straightforward. So if I just go back to the documentation where I mentioned that, go here and I'll do a search because I know it's called facet, exactly. So you have things like your, your facet, your layer, your concatenation, and this is a bit more advanced, which is why I didn't want to get into it in this um, or do it so precisely uh, today. But be aware that you can do these things and you can create small multiples um, in ways that you definitely can't in Power BI. Um, you can also pull many visualizations together, group them and do it that way as well, which I think is very, very helpful. I've had a, um, a lot of fun and some relative success doing that sort of thing. So it's, for me, helpful to look at these pages such as um, the examples because they kind of give you something to kind of work towards. Um, I'm a big advocate of creating very silly reports that have no decent purpose other than learning. Um, I created a ridiculous, I'm not even going to call it a report, um, a few months ago based on the song lyrics of a terrible song back in the early noughties. I think it was called, yeah, it was called Friday by Rebecca Black. This is ridiculous, I understand that. Um, but I but I used um, this visualization because I think it's really cool to do that, this sort of thing, to actually use your, your data labels, if you will, actually with inside the visualization itself. And... Once you've started going through the steps, and even I would say for what we've looked at today, if you'd never had any experience with Deneb or, or Vega Light, really, Vega Light is the, is the hard part, Deneb is the vehicle that lets us use it in Power BI. Um, you can start to understand more, like even just the stuff like looking at a mark and a type and a layer. Once you've seen those things and used them once, it's much easier to build on your knowledge and create um, some pretty interesting or very, very helpful visualizations. And again, because it's free, you can really utilize these quite quickly in your reports. There's no need to get any kind of authorization. Can you pay for this license or that sort of thing? Because it's it, it's all right there, you know? Um, so just going back to the visualization that we created. That's another visualization we created. I don't know why we did that. And taking this one here, these two are essentially the same. Well, they are the same visualization. The only difference is that in this one, I've used small multiples. In this one, of course, I haven't. Uh, it does bring up one um, important point, though, is that here we've got goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, and forward. I haven't brought that data into this visualization, but I will now. And um, you'll see something that's quite important to um, to know about Deneb is that if I use position, you see what happened? I'm not sure if you saw what happened there. So if I just go over that again like that and I go position, it's not really easy to see because of the color in here, you'll see that it's actually automatically broken down everything Though I haven't asked it to do that, I didn't specify anywhere to use that data. It has used it. So very important to only bring in the data that you want to use because just by existing within your values, it will actually 
break those values down on your visualization. And this is this is in the Denim documentation, and it um, basically states to only bring in precisely the data that you want, which in my eyes is good best, best practice anyway. Um, but quite often you'll maybe create a visualization, you'll forget that there's a certain bit there and you'll just kind of use it and forget. But with Deneb, you can't do that. With Deneb, if you have this, um, this dimension there, if you will, it's going to use it. It's obviously less important for um, your values, your measures, but it's really, it's for these, um, this, this sort of thing, because it'll show them the data. But if I put that here, I put my position back in and just show something, what we can do with this, if I just quickly try to do this, and what I want to do is show you the difference between a couple of things. I'm just going to copy and paste a big chunk of text, but hopefully you'll see that it's very similar. And I'll highlight the differences between these two things. So I'm sorry to do that really quickly. It's just it's simply for time and I didn't want to, um, it would have taken a good few minutes. Um, so the difference is, so what you can see straightforward, what did we already have? We had our layer, which was a mark, it was a bar, and we had a total points by game week in as the text. Yeah, so as you can see the visualization, all the elements that we had before are still there. They still exist. I haven't changed any of those things. The only thing really I've added at the top is I've specified a number of columns and I've used this as a facet. So if I were to say columns one, for example, do it that way, you can then see I have one column of data. So I've specified two and I've said facet and I've specified the field, which is my position. So I basically say use my, my position as what creates the small multiples. The sort is something that obviously you don't need. That's something that I put in because I wanted it to be sorted by goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, forward. So I want that to be sorted that way. I've specified this, the height and width, because when you use a standard visualization, it will automatically adjust based on the size. So if you drag it, it'll change the size. But when you use a facet, it actually when you do small multiple, it actually won't do that. So you do have to specify the width and the size yourself. And as you can see here, our dotted lines indicate where a visualization ends. So I know that when I apply those changes and I go back to my report, see, it's not going to fit in. So I'd have to make it slightly wider, you know? So these are all things you can change. So I apologize that I didn't have time to show you how to create this small multiple. Um, but I wanted to show you that it's possible because I understand there's also lots of questions about what you can do, what you can't do. Um, and small multiples are, in my mind, a quite important um, way of displaying data. Um, so I remember the agenda said we have a few minutes for questions at the end. I would say that we could start that now because generally if I start talking about something else now, I would definitely go over a lot of time. Um, and I'd rather take some questions and ensure that everyone is kind of at least learn something or have any questions and thought, Ben, I hope to learn that. I haven't learned that yet. Please do that. Then I can do that right now. If that is acceptable to um, everyone, including um, the hosts, what do you think? Hi, Ben, it's Chris. Hello there, Chris. Hello. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat. Um, okay, that's fine. Um, which it's I'm just hoping that people can view the chat because we've dropped a few links in there and everything as we've went along. Yes, I've seen that. Um, if there's any like questions that people have thought of right now, then feel free to go for it. I can do one or, one or two more things, um, but I also don't want to overload, overload you know. Um, I hope that what I showed made sense and I hope Really, as I said, my point was just to show you how you can go some, from something which is extraordinarily basic, like a bar chart. And this is, I mean, this is, a, a, for me, an important part to, to remember. Like, we started off with this, you know? This is what we had. And in the end, I mean, not so much that, because I kind of cheated there, but I'll copy and paste that back in what, where we ended up. And this is what we had um, in the end, other than the... Um, <laughs> other than the, the purple color that I've just specified now. Um, so I think 
for me, that was the, the I really hope I've, I've got that across that basically it's, it's a really good way to kind of learn incrementally as you say, oh, I want to add this. Oh, I want to add that. And you can really do that um, in using Vega Lite with Denim. So I hope at least that was clear. And um, if you want to look at other examples of what are possible, I, I always take time to mention um, uh, Kerry Colosco, who does uh, a lot of work with lots of different visualization types, um, but she does a lot. She, I mean, she's been awesome for Denim. And um, she has her blog which i can highly recommend and she creates lots of different different cool stuff um this is great to look at if i may plug something that i've done <laughs> um i created a or oh, i created a, a video on how to create a a matrix using um Deneb because in power bi uh, maybe you've recognized that when you create a matrix, you have this issue with column width. Um, it's not automatic. You have to adjust all the column sizes yourself, all this sort of thing. Um, and that for me was a huge win straight away for Denim because essentially this is the very start of a matrix um, other than some things that need to be changed up. But if you see when I do this, it's like automatically adjusting the columns. And if you do some changes to it, you can also make it like a proper looking matrix and also specify the column width. So really lots of different bits and pieces that you can do um, with not a lot of knowledge, simply copying and pasting and learning from yourself. And as a person who has uh, learned a lot of simply from copying and pasting, I think you can go quite far pretty quickly just through um, the things that I mentioned there. I think you've answered one of my questions, Ben, already about the matrix. Okay. I was I was going to ask that. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's the bane of my life. The the, the um the default matrix that drives me insane. It's one of those things that you look at and you're like, how does this still exist that way? Oh. Um, but I mean, obviously, you know, if you use a Power BI matrix, you can use your um your, your different um whatever like hierarchies and stuff, which. The one I created with with, with Deneb, you don't have that the hierarchies, but if you just want to show a nice matrix, it looks really cool and it just stops you from tearing out your hair and just you know I mean I created myself a video a long time ago on like this hack of how to make sure they're all like vertically how they're all like um, have the same width essentially, uh, mm. and that was great back then. But I look at it now, I'm just kind of like don't need it. Deneb works, it's fast and. Uh, as I probably, no, I didn't show this at all. When you create these things, you also have the option of creating templates, okay? So this button that I just clicked here, if you want to look at a template and you, um, you can click on that and that will save all your data as a template, which is really cool because then you can copy. What I've been doing in my company, I've been creating those templates. So my colleagues don't have to learn Deneb. They can simply use a template replace the measures and replace the dimension and it works really quickly. I forgot that the um, the team at, um, I'm so terrible at remembering things when I'm talking off the top of my head. There's a team who have um, a great resource for Vega Lite templates and um, oh, man, I'll, um, I'll try to remember. I, I always, when I do these chats, I've always got to apologize for someone for forgetting their, their name or whatever. So this is that, that's today's. Um, Power BI Tips, is that a thing? I think Power BI Tips, they have great Deno templates. Anyway, that's beside the point. There, there are loads of resources for templates, for learning, all that sort of stuff. So take advantage of it. Um, Hannah, thank you for your comment. I really appreciate that. Yes, go away and play around with it. And um, Mark, yeah, loving the data set choice. I love my FPL report. I am terrible, uh, that's uh, fantasy football, sorry. I am terrible at playing fantasy football because I miss deadlines and I'm too busy tinkering with my report to actually change my team. So terrible at the game, nice report, there you go. <laughs> I've got a couple of questions, uh, Ben. Yeah, got please. Time. Um, one of them was around formatting data labels. So. There is a restriction um, on data label size on the native visuals to eight. Yeah. Do we have the ability to 
get any spoiler, like six, for example, and what would it actually feed through correctly? Yeah, that's actually a good point. I've, I've, you, you can change the date label sizes all you want. Yeah, I mean, I've never created anything I think smaller than six, to be honest. But there is no that I haven't come. You can change. So yeah, this is a good point. I am. Um, you can change the size of all of these things. Um, I haven't got it set up with my examples. I apologize for that. Um, but but absolutely, maybe if I just if I got the documentation and show you there, it's probably the best way of doing it, unless I'm wrong. Um, da, 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 text should be there. Yeah, so font size, look, see, and this is a wonderful thing as well, by the way, I mentioned before, you can just play around it, look, there you go, so you can go as small as, as one, if you so wish to upset everyone, and just go massively huge to, um, and then we can also play around with that as well, and say, okay, see, this is cool, because a question I wasn't prepared for, so I'm going to use this instead, um, what did I say, no, one second, run it, there you go, so we go font size, we've got like 14 and stuff, and, Maybe if I just change this to like, I don't know, 45, maybe that'll work, I'm not sure. But basically you can change, you can make it massively huge. I mean, you're never gonna need a font size more than 36. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure you can make it that way if you want. And you're never gonna need a font, font size smaller than whatever this is. So yes, you can, the font sizes you can absolutely change. And that's a, a really good point though. There's a lot of restrictions that we're kind of used to because that's just the way it's set up that don't really, exist anymore here and as i said we mentioned before about the um in the in the config here you know you just label font size here so but it's you can also search by the way which is very helpful you see your um steuerung, steuerung, uh, control if you go to control and then f like you do and you just go to font and you can just search through all the different fonts so you got you got your font type here and then okay again more fonts font size for example let's that's font 12 so if i change that to eight see what happens it has tiny, see? If I go to font size one, even tinier, oh my lord, say it's 150. Oh, nothing but, <laughs> nothing but font. So basically, to answer your question, you can do whatever the hell you want, no matter how terrible it looks. There you go. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. E even font types as well, because we are restricted with font types as well, aren't we? Um, yes, font types you can change. I. I can't tell you which ones you can, you can't use, to be honest. Right. I haven't played around with the font types so much. Um, I did a while back and I forgot to be honest. Um, no, you can change font type, that's all I can tell you. Um, yeah. Maybe again, you know, let's go to our documentation and see what it says, <laughs> font type. Um, oh, here we go, font sense, no, that can't be right, font, wait. No, it's not showing me that. But yes, sorry. Um, sorry, I can't answer that um, completely fully. You can change like your font, the, your, your serif, months, all that kind of stuff. But we know for a fact that there's also um, uh, so font. What we got here? <laughs> anyway, look, I don't want to go through the documentation and just do it that way because that's oh, that's just me cheating. But yes, you can change fonts there and what have you there as well. Whether that's just restricted by what exists already in Power BI. Uh, I don't know, but that's a really good question. I appreciate it, and I'll try and play around that myself as well, actually. You give me okay. video ideas, mate. <laughs> Got one more question. Go for it. Um, so you mentioned saving visuals as templates. Mm -hmm. As a template, yeah. Um, so you've got all this fancy design. You've got all your blues. You've got all your reds, mm. whatever you have. If you've got a Power BI theme on your desktop report, what takes precedence? So you can tell it to use your theme. Right. So I give um, the templates that, that I am be using, I tell them to use the theme. If you specify a color outside that theme, of course, it's still going to use the color that, that's out there outside of your theme. Yeah. So if you, okay. that just is the way it goes. But you can say with inside your, um, inside your, specification where to take the color from and i have completely forgotten how to do that uh but i know it exists on all the templates that i've created for work but i'm not my work computer um but yeah yeah it's it's helpful to have it uh, because obviously now it's defaulting for for this you know um mm. but again if you specify use the theme it will it will do that way awesome brilliant yeah. um 
that's it for me for questions. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, feel free to come off your mic. Um, go on to your mic, sorry. Uh, or pop something in the chat. I must, I must say that, well, that was a great session. I'm, I'm going to definitely start using this. I briefly looked at it myself, but never really played around with it as, as, as much as what you just showed me there. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really, like I say, I mean, for me, if I um, maybe people might think I'm going um, over the top with this, perhaps. But for me, it's kind of like uh, the visual vi revolutionary visualization wise, like tabular editor was for your uh, your model and stuff, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I know people use Charticulator, which is also a good visualization. Yeah. To be honest, that wasn't for me. Um, lots of uh, clicking, uh, each of their own. It's very positive that we have within Power BI the two things to choose from. So yeah. um, it's for me a conversation that, that I'll enjoy as little as I'll enjoy Power BI versus Tableau. Basically, it's pointless. Pick the one that works for you and use it um, because they're both very good. I just prefer using Deneb, I think you can kind of do a bit more with it. And because you can do the coding, you kind of feel that the, the end, because again, because you can copy and paste so easily and use templates. I think it's just easy to kind of get started and achieve something pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I agree on that one. Um, I forgot yeah. to mention Daniel, by the way, they're also all created by one person, uh, Daniel, who is, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I think I did one of these talks a few months ago and I completely forgot to mention Daniel, so I felt so bad about that. So before I do it again this time, uh, basically it's all um, it's all the work of one of one person who does an amazing job. And this is, uh, I think someone's posted this this link already. So you can check this out and you've got all the documentation. You know, if you want to sponsor, you can do that as well. Um, but loads of stuff here to, um, to, to, be, to be getting involved in. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, and I hope this was a nice kickstart um, to the, the world of Deneb, my obsession for the past few months. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely brilliant. Anything cool. you want to close with, um, Chris, Mark? Um, nothing in particular other than thank you very much, Ben. It was fantastic, ben. as, as Glenn has already mentioned. Uh, really appreciate you giving up your time uh, to come and present for us. Uh, my time's not that valuable. <laughs> uh, thanks for the invite. I really enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much for, for letting me present. It's always always good fun. So, uh, yeah. If you know, if anyone has any questions about this sort of thing, you can always just. Um, I'm on. I'm pretty active on Twitter as well. Um, at Power BI Guy, and uh, again on YouTube at uh, so YouTube forward slash Power BI Guy, and um, yeah. So feel free to whatever contact me with these uh, questions. If I can answer them, I will. If I can't, I'll feel a deep sense of shame and then fix it and then try to see how I can do it and then try and get back to you with an answer. All right. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. That was I was going to say, and just really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, well, like I said, thank you very much. Uh, you know where to find me. And, uh, and I was going to say, Ben, just, just finally from, uh, from our side, if you're ever in the Northeast, you know, if you do come back over this way, give us a shout. And uh, we'll, we'll meet up and have a, a few beers. Sounds like a plan. I'd never say no to that, man. Be much appreciated. <laughs> you can you can show me what's changed in the past few years. You know, well, Glenn will have to do that. He's the one that frequents all the the bars these days. Oh, the man down the big market, right? Like that. Ne never happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was there when I was there a long time ago. Was um, when I was still a student. It was all about Bar Harbor Beach Club. So I'm sure that's uh, oh, God. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's long gone. Long gone. It was, it, it was terrible, so it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. The only club with only one CD, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The City of Castle is a very, very different place in terms of pubs and clubs to what it used to be, certainly when, when I was a lad. Yeah. But, uh, I, think, I think my tastes have changed these days as well, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I prefer the, the quiet bars where we can sit and have a chat, not, uh, yeah. not the big, loud wave clubs that, that Glenn loves, you know. Uh, yeah, I can that is like I look at him and tell you it's a crazy party animal, son. Yeah. In the nineties maybe, not now. <laughs> <laughs> Too old for that. Oh man, love it. All right. Cool. I'm still awesome. Me? Well I'll stop the recording there, but thank you very much, Ben. Really do appreciate that and um enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. Same to you and um goodbye everyone. Take care. Cheers.
Ja. Danke. Bye-bye.